Hi, I just wanted to go over the instructions really quick on the parasitic worms life cycle assignment. So learning intention on this one, we're learning about the biological characteristics of animals that pose a danger to our safety. So we know how to handle situations with these animals. So there are many um, types of parasitic worms that are sometimes referred to in the medical community as helminths. Um, we want to go over some details about uh, the complex life cycles that some of these worms go through that inevitably involve people. The success criteria, I'll be successful when I can identify key hosts in a parasitic worm's life cycle. I can identify the impacts that parasitic worms have on the human body and how to treat infections of these worms. And I can analyze the statistical data related to infections of these parasitic worms in real world populations. So there's a link to some diagrams that are included. So again, this will show you the life cycle of the three example worms we're looking at. So the Asian liver fluke is the first one. And underneath each one, there is one um, basically statistical graph, either like a pie chart like this or a map or a bar graph, something that you can interpret for some of your questions on this. The trachina worm, and then finally the pork tapeworm. So again, you're getting an idea of how they move between two hosts, as well as what parts of the human body they are traveling through and kind of what's going on in each section. So for each of your worms, you're going to be answering very similar questions. And for each one, there's also a link to the Center for Disease Control and their information about that particular type of infection. So for example, if I click on the one under the Asian liver fluke, it says, you know, it's all this information about Clonorchis. Clonorchis is the genus name for the Asian liver fluke. So again, there are certain headings in this uh, article that will help you with certain sections on it. So based on the diagram, what are the three hosts that the Asian liver fluke lives in throughout its life cycle? Again, look at the included diagrams on that link to kind of help you figure out which, which organisms besides the worms are present there. What are they traveling through? We want to know with each worm, how does it get inside the human host? And with this one, I would try to be as specific as possible. Uh, usually it involves consumption of food, but I would talk about the quality of that food too, just to get that point across. Three, what part of the human host's body does that worm specifically live in? So again, there are multiple answers that would be applicable for this. Again, when you look at the diagram, you can figure out which organs the worms are interacting with. Or again, you can look at the CDC information where it talks a little bit more about what organs are involved in the infection process. We also want to know what are the symptoms of a human host that has an infection with that type of worm. Again, the CDC info will help with this. Many times the symptoms may be um, not very significant uh, since they're parasites. They don't want to be detected by their host. But I do want you to list what doctors have noted as far as like, OK, even if they're mild symptoms, these are the symptoms that we see. If it's left untreated, how do the eggs of that worm leave the host? Or if it leaves in another way besides eggs, how does it um, emerge from a human host? So again, look over the life cycle to determine your answer for that part. What treatment is available to stop the infection of that particular type of worm? Again, the CDC info usually has a section where it talks about um, basically treatment. So like how is infectious with Clonorchis treated? And that should help you with that section. And then once again, looking at that, uh, in this case, a pie chart with the first example. So no matter what, there'll be some little statistical graphic with an explanation, like a little title explaining what you're looking at here. I just want you to make some general observations uh, about analyzing that particular you know, piece of data. And after you analyze that piece of data, what would be your hypothesis for what causes you know, either countries or people with high numbers to have those high numbers or why is there infection in one part of the world versus another so some sort of guess as to why certain numbers are laying the way that they are based on your observations that you noted before so you'll do this for all three worm species that are mentioned here and that's basically it again you're just analyzing those life cycle diagrams the cdc information and the statistical diagrams that are included as well so I hope this gives you a little bit of insight into how parasitic worms work. Again, maybe you've encountered these before with a pet, but now you'll have a little bit of understanding about ones that can interact with humans.